Hello everybody, my name is Laura and you're watching the Bean Bird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. So today I went to the store and while I was at Costco, there was a sea of people. I mean, it's Saturday, it's busy, and I was just marveling at how with all the faces that were around me, everybody has a unique face. Nobody looks like the other. Everybody looks like an individual and there's this uniqueness in the way that God created each one of us purposefully and beautifully that we don't just look like the person next to us. And that's kind of a, I mean, it's a, it's a miracle. One of those miracles when you think about how our fingerprints are unique and our DNA and our saliva and um, our retinas are unique and um, just the marveling at the beauty of the way that God created people. And um, I mean, it would be easier to make it so that people all kind of look the same. Like when you look at a bluebird outside, um, one bluebird kind of looks like the next bluebird. I mean, there might be some differences there, but on the surface, they look basically kind of the same. But with people, there's just such variety. And um, think about how the Lord you know, has his unique hand on each one of us when he knits us in our mother's womb. And I just kind of wanted to share that thought today. Um, also, on the way home, I stopped at Harris Teeter, which is a grocery store chain around here. And while we were waiting in the checkout line, I noticed that there was a witchcraft magazine and I've never seen a witchcraft magazine in a grocery store before. And so I had to pick it up and look at it and turned on the back cover to see, you know, what was there. And it was just a book that was glorifying spells. And it said something like, let's do spells together or something like that. And I didn't open it, but I just kind of was like, why is this in a grocery store? I mean, we are in the end times. I have never seen stuff like this in the grocery store before. Um, I also saw next to it a magazine that was like haunted houses and um, it was, I don't know if it's like a haunted house magazine or, or what. I'm sure that they're putting this stuff out for Halloween, which is coming. But I was just like, wow. I mean, we do see like Halloween stuff come out around this time every year, but I've never seen it this bad before. And so I'm sure you're seeing things too. And it can be disheartening and we can get discouraged uh, when we see all that around us, when we hear people maybe scoffing the end times or, you know, people that just don't want to hear the truth or they don't want to hear the gospel. And I just want to encourage that we need to just keep doing our part, keep sharing, keep persevering, keep reaching out to those that you can and, you know, do what you can because we don't know when Jesus is going to come. Um, I hope that he comes soon in the rapture. I'm always waiting and watching and I see the signs around us, the beast system getting built up and established and these evil things like witchcraft becoming more commonplace, um, more acceptable by the world standards, infiltrating our media and our music and just our everyday life at the grocery store now. And um, as I was pondering all these things, I was praying and I had the verse in First Thessalonians chapter 1 come to mind and so I thought I would read it and there's a little commentary thing that I'd like to highlight and point out. So here it's Paul writing in Second Thessalonians, I think I said First Thessalonians, but this is Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and the title heading in, in my Bible titles it um, Thanksgiving for Faith and Perseverance. And that's what we're doing, right? We, we're holding on to faith and we're persevering in these dark days. And it says, um, Paul and Sylvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting because your faith is greatly enlarged and the love of each one of you toward one another grows ever greater. Therefore, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God 
for which indeed you are suffering. For after all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well. When the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day and to be marveled at among all who have believed. For our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we also pray for you always that our God will count you as worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and for the work of faith and power, faith with power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and that you and him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to point out that in the commentary, it says here, he prayed as he did that they might behave in ways consistent with their in, with ways consistent with their identity as Christians, living up to their calling of salvation, with lives marked by goodness and the powerful works of faith. That is so beautiful, and we need to walk worthy. And um, we want God to be glorified in us. And also, this other commentary here I'll mention. Having right attitude towards suffering is essential, and that is, in that required attitude is concerned for the kingdom of God. They were not self-centered, but they were concentrated on God's kingdom. Their focus was not on personal comfort, fulfillment, and happiness, but on the glory of God and the fulfillment of his purposes. They were not moaning about the injustice of their persecutions. Rather, they were patiently enduring the sufferings they did not deserve. This very attitude was positive proof that God was wise process of purging, purifying and perfecting through suffering, was working to make his beloved people worthy of the kingdom, being perfected. For believers, afflictions are to be expected as they live and develop Christian character in a Satan war satanic world. Suffering is not to be thought of as evidence that God has forsaken them, but evidence that he is with us that he is perfecting us. So the Thessalonians demonstrated that their salvation, determined by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ, was genuine because they, like Christ, were willing to suffer on account of God and his kingdom. They suffered unjustly as objects of man's wrath against Christ and his kingdom. And, um, yeah, so I just thought that was a beautiful commentary, and I feel like we are going through similar things now as we are Christians living in a satanic world and we see it closing in all around us and I just want to encourage you guys to keep up the faith and to keep you know allowing God to work on us as he perfects us for him and that soon you know he will come again and we will be ready and just, just stay in prayer and reach out to those all around you so have a good Saturday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.